We're the Penfield All-Stars, and you're watching the Rockin' Hockey Show. This is hockey, the way it should be. Welcome to the Rockin' Hockey Show. This is the Rockin' Hockey Show. And now the guy who took the last cookie without telling me, Coach Dave. Hey, what's up, hockey and rock and roll fans, and welcome to the Rock and Hockey. Yes, I shaved the beard, and I am ready to rock. So we say like to rock, and say like to hot. See, so take it all the way to the back of the cage, oh yeah! Hey everybody, and welcome to show 19 of the Rockin' Hockey Show. Yes, show 19, and I am rocking not only my GNR shirt, but my uh, Jackie Moon Flint Tropic shorts today. All right, before we go any farther, I want to thank Alex Jelsey, my good buddy, uh, for being on show 18 and talking about the importance of playing where you're loved, because that's what you get, right? If this is your first time watching the Rockin' Hockey Show, Here's to you, man. Keep on rocking. Make sure you subscribe so you check out all the latest episodes. Don't just subscribe. Make sure you, Gordy Howe, bam, smash that subscribe button. Okay. Man, do we have a great guest for you today on the Rock and Hockey Show. We have legendary power skating coach slash instructor, Robbie Glantz. Robbie joins us by Zoom here in the Rock and Hockey Lair and uh, talks about the importance of uh, power skating, how we got to be a power skating coach. As he said, you don't go to college for what he does. But he also talks about just the importance of being a good skater and a strong skater. And that comes from great players like Sidney Crosby, uh, Rob Blake, uh, Scott Stevens, and the list goes on and on of all the great players that Robbie has worked with through the years. You can see Robbie's videos on NHL Network because he's also an analyst on there for skating and skills. And not only does Robbie join us here, on a Rockin' Hockey Show YouTube channel, but Robbie is also our very first guest on our first podcast. Yes, the Rockin' Hockey Show podcast is out. You can catch it on all your major podcast platforms. And Robbie was our first guest on show number one. Make sure you check that out, the Rockin' Hockey Show podcast. Hey, it's much easier than watching YouTube. You can listen to it in your car. You can listen to it at work. You can listen to it while you're sitting on the toilet, laying in a hammock, cutting the grass. Hey. It's there for you, man. Whenever you want to listen to it, you don't want to listen to uh, uh, somebody else talk, you're in a, in a conference, just plug in a rock and hockey show, and away you go. All right, before we go any farther, say hi to the band. All right, we have a great skill development session for you today here on the Rock and Hockey Show. It's a new series about scoring goals, so make sure you check it out. Uh, it's called Rock and Roll Goals, Shooting to Score. All right, remember, this is the show where the hockey rocks. The goal, and again, that one goes wide, and a big hit right there. And the music sucks. It's John Beato from Northside Johnny, and you're watching The Rock and Hockey Show. All right, buckle up your chin straps, not going to waste any more time. Let's get rocking. Hey, welcome to the Rock and Hockey Show and our first podcast. Arch, can you believe it? Our first podcast. It's like day one. You ever seen day one with Jack Black? I have not. Um, you ever seen day one? No. <laughs> and 
I don't watch a lot of Jack Black. I'll be oh, honest with you. Um, he ruined the King Kong movie. <laughs> so anyway, this is the Rock and Hockey Show, and yes, we like to talk a lot about hockey, but also we uh, we're not afraid to throw some movie quotes around every now and then. And RJ, this is our first show. Um, and you know, we'll talk a little bit about what the show is about. Obviously, it's about hockey. It's not an NHL show. It's about um, youth hockey. It's about the people that live and breathe it, uh, like you and I, and yeah. um, all the players, the parents, uh, the hockey parents, uh, and the coaches. And it does have some NHL, but it's it's a show with great hockey content in it. Hey, hockey and rock and roll fans! I want to take just a second to welcome Trotta to the Rock yeah, Hockey Camp. Check out the newly renovated Trotta 2.0 right off of 490 at Cops Hill at the new Calder Road Army. Trotta Rochester. Two outdoor dining areas including a massive upstairs patio with a pool bar. Man, you gotta check out their 100 square foot TV wall above the main bar and an additional 8 large screen TVs as well. Make sure you partake in the self-serve beer wall with over 50 beer and wine selections. Today's interview brought to you by Trotta. Check them out at TrotterRochester.com. I mean, we basically live hockey, and uh, now we get to talk about it all day. We do live hockey, and uh, just to put some numbers to it, Arj, you and I have been in the trenches for nearly 30 years now with uh, with hockey, youth hockey. Um, you know, a little bit about our backgrounds. I played hockey. I played, I played college. I played pro, uh, but mainly most of my uh, most of my hockey spent uh, on lesson ice and, and backyard rinks. And uh, you're living it on the opposite side in the in the retail industry and working uh, in the rink management industry. So you and I have been in the trenches for a long time with youth hockey, and now we got a show that just talks about hockey. And hey, Johnny, what's up, buddy? Hi. How are you? How are you? What kind of car does an egg drive? I don't know what. A Yolks wagon. <laughs> We got legendary power skating coach and uh, skating coach of multiple NHL teams, multi hundreds of players. Is that correct, Robbie? Hundreds of players. You've coached all over, of all over Europe. You're a skating and skill specialist on the NHL Network, and you're here with us from sunny California here in the Rock and Hockey Show. Welcome. Thank you, guys. I'm actually in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, right now. <laughs> it's, what? Still, it's, it's still sunny. sunny. <laughs> we have we have six. Even more sunny. We're 64 and rainy for the next month, so then it should be good. Yeah, now, you'll, Robbie, you'll be moving here in no time, I'm sure. I've oh. been to uh, Arizona once, and that was an awesome place. I love it. I won't go off on a tangent there. I was in um, Sonoma. You ever been to Sonoma? It's up. Uh, oh, Sedona. Sedona, Sedona yeah, yes. Yeah, and Flagstaff, <laughs> it's beautiful up there. Yeah, it is, it is awesome. So, who's, well, the, Robbie, who's, the third, who's the third guy with the Royals jersey on? I know. Oh, oh, that's, that uh, that's uh, uh, Becker the Checker. Becker the Checker. <laughs> Becker the Checker, yeah. Have you ever actually hit one of those checking dummies before? Oh, <laughs> I guys, don't hit anything. I never <laughs> hit anything. <laughs> those guys are tough, man. They worked me over. Yeah. Now, Robbie, what I love is that, uh, you know, and obviously we like to have fun in the show, and I'm going to rip on myself a little bit here too, but uh, is that you're still in the trenches after all these years teaching skating all the time. I love that. And I've been, I started teaching uh, skating and skills probably almost 30 years ago. And I think uh, they had just invented the wheel, RJ, when I first started skating. <laughs> and I think uh, George Washington might have been in one of my first clinics, but. I remember when I started doing it, I wanted to learn as much as I could. And I remember seeing your brochure, which I still love your logo, by the way, with a guy skate lightning fast. I think it's awesome. Thank You've been you. doing uh, skating stuff for a long time. <laughs> That's awesome. How, how are you feeling? Good? Which is incredible since I'm only 38 years old that <laughs> I've been doing this also over 30 years. That's what I thought. Uh, no, I'm feeling good. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I And, and you can't do anything that you're not passionate about you know that is the that's the key to any profession you're in uh, yeah, take it seriously and try to be the best you can but yeah i've been doing it over 30 years also and you and, still love getting out there and in, in the trenches and working with kids love it. love it you saw a little bit of it when i was in rochester a few weeks yep. ago and, uh, you know i treat it like um i treat it a like the first year or two i've ever done it but b i treat it like i wish i had had this when I was that age, you know, and that's the way I approach every single time I'm on the ice. Well, that's awesome. Um, 
Now you've worked with teams in Germany, Switzerland, Sweden. Do you speak all those languages? I uh, no, I speak a little German to get by. I haven't been there in a few years uh, uh, because of the pandemic. But uh, I, I do more stuff here in the uh, in the states in North America. But I was going about four or five times a year the last few years too, until twenty, obviously, uh, to Sweden and to. England and to France and to Germany and uh, no, the great thing about Sweden, well, the Scandinavian countries in general and Norway too, uh, you don't have to speak their language. They speak perfect English better than we do here. Oh, really? <laughs> I yeah. have money on that. I would. <laughs> yes, bet. when I was, you know, it's funny when I was teaching in uh, in uh, Sheffield, England, uh, in London, uh, outside of you know, in uh, Great Britain, a couple of years ago. I I don't understand what they were saying, <laughs> and, uh, and they're speaking English, but the Swedes I, and the Norwegians I understood perfectly. <laughs> who was um? Don't they have a minor like? Well, I shouldn't say minor. Don't they have a pro team in Sheffield there? Like they do, a, they do, and they have a big hockey business? association. And they and they packed uh, the camp. It was great, great. Yeah. Just out, just since the pandemic, I haven't been able to get back, which is a little bit of a bummer. But I think I'll be going back to Norway. Uh, and Sweden in December. We'll see. Let's see if this okay. holds. You'll see okay. what happens, right, over there. That's a, not an interesting place right now. So. Now, yeah. Robbie, listen, now, uh, as long as I've been teaching power skating, every time you step on the ice and the kids see that it's power skating coach coming out, yeah. oh, we got to do power skating again. Can't we just scrimmage? Do you ever get that? Because I hope it's not just me that gets that. Uh Maybe. Well, for my camp, it's a little different, Dave, because they're, they're, they've pre-signed up. So you, you already have a, uh, a vested interest, you know, <laughs> the parents. Have, we should do that. We should they, trick them next time. <laughs> yeah, no, they know that they're signing up for something. Um, but yeah, sure. And I get that with pro players sometimes, too. You know, my buddy, Bobby Ryan, who just retired, a great NHL player and a student of mine since he was a kid. And then he got me with the Ducks, too, when I was with the Ducks. But um, Bobby... Uh, Bobby would come out and ask, Robbie, pucks today, pucks today. Let's stick handle. I go, <laughs> no, I've seen you skate. We got to work on that. <laughs> you, to and he ended up being a great skater. He worked very hard at it, but a long time. Dave's doing our, um, was it Mike? <laughs> our doodle bug spring league, which is like four and five year olds. Like they're not even mites yet. And I was just talking to Dave about something beforehand. The kids are just warming up. This kid skates over right to Dave. He goes, Coach, can we get pucks out now? Can we get pucks out? Before it even started, I looked right at him. I go, now there's no pucks the whole practice. It's like, it's like these kids. I'm, all- I'm a big, I'm actually a big believer in pucks. I, I do. I'm sure you guys are too. I was watching some oh, yeah. stuff, yeah. Dave, but I put pucks in everything I do. Everything. Uh, but we always start without and try to get their hands and their feet and their legs and their body, certainly the posture of the body in the right position. And then the puck becomes part of that as opposed to the other way around where the you're fighting the puck yeah i find that the puck is a big distraction when you're trying to teach something uh, it it can be if they're messing around with it for sure right but it's also distraction if you don't have your hands in the right spot or your stick in the right spot uh it it can be it's way less of a distraction if you get the technique down right and then suddenly you throw the puck in it's a lot easier which is the whole point of what we're trying to teach so, Robbie, tell us a little bit about growing up and what led you to do what you do. Now, I read a little I, I bit that you were happy a, with your skating. What's that? I, I will. Is that an ACDC shirt you're wearing? Is that what that <laughs> yeah, is? That's, so, it is an ACDC shirt because this is called the Rock and <laughs> Hockey Show. So, it's about music and uh, hockey. But, yeah. it, but look at his hat, though. It's like. Can he do like a Brian Johnson uh, fire thing? Are you able to uh, do an impersonation of that? Yeah. No, no. Wait, was that his name? Did I get his name right? That Brian was it. Johnson, right. Yep. Yeah, thank you. See, yeah, that's, that's too great. I love it. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. What was the question again? No, no, that's like a great, growing up. Great. The question was uh, growing up. What led you to become the, the power skating instructor that you are? Well, you know, you don't go to college for this job that I do. (laughs) And I was uh, actually a film major. I stopped playing a little bit and then came back to it and was playing on a uh, AC uh, HA team, you know, club college hockey. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, my brother was going to go back East and play at Northeastern. And uh, I, I, listen, I grew up playing with good players. I mean, my two line mates made the NHL, Craig Cox and Matt Hervey. You remember big Craig, big tough guy. Yeah. And but Craig was a great player growing up too. And uh, my brother was a good player. He's going to play at Northeastern, but he was not the fastest 
skater of all times. And so uh, uh, my dad, in his infinite wisdom, flew out a skating instructor to, to work with us. And uh, she said, uh, she said to me, gee, I don't think you're a very good player, but you, you sure can see this. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I won't mention who it was who said that to me, but pretty obvious. Um, <laughs> and uh, for whatever reason, I can just see it. You know, I just, uh, Dave, you, you do too. You know, you just, you know, and, and I could see it at top speed and I could see it with the world's best, you know, for whatever reason, you know, uh, I, <laughs> So that's how I got into it. And, uh, and then I always wished once I learned how to skate properly myself from her and from teaching my brother and teaching other kids uh, locally in that first year or so, and this was many years ago, um, I always thought to myself, geez, I wish I had had this when I was seven, eight, not younger, maybe even or older, just someone to correct my technique because then I could have worked the right way. And you're making, you know, Perfect practice makes perfect. So if you're practicing the wrong way all the time, that's what you're, that's what you're reinforcing. Yeah. And so I take that passion that we talked about passion to the ice. You know, that's awesome. That makes sense. I was, I'm passionate about wishing I had had it. I would have been a much better player and I'm, I'm obviously a much better skater. Yeah. I tell people all the time that I didn't really start working on my skating till I was playing college hockey. Exactly. So when same. I'm, when I'm working with young players, I'm like, man, you guys are 10 years ahead of when I started working on my skating. That's right. And, and, and it's, right. it's such or a- Or even more. I mean, these kids well, are starting at four and five and six, which they should because it builds your hips a different way when you start early. And that's, you see the difference. So. Well, and that's some of the issue too, is some of these kids, uh, all they want to do is the Michigan at five years yeah. old. And <laughs> it's like, that's great. Now try getting away from the net and try to back check. And like, they're not even in the play because they don't even want to, they don't, they just can't like skating is sometimes the last thing on some of these kids' minds. Yeah, um, but it's and, it, can, and it, it certainly will catch up. Yeah, it definitely. Certainly so. will catch up. But Dave, that's uh, that's the way to make it. That's why you have to make it fun too. Like you're referencing, you have to make it fun because um, otherwise they turn off to it too. Because it can be drudgery and it can be just repetition. You know, if you come back to my camps, which many you know most people come back many many times because it is repetition, but it's repetition doing it the right way. But you'll see almost this. I almost do the same first drill since I do the same thing with the NHL guys. When I get an NHL player, I do the same first drill to get them in the right posture almost every time. And uh, and it's nothing that complicated. I've shown it on NHL Network, actually, when I went out with Alex Tangay, and you can just watch those online. When I go on the ice with him, it's my favorite drill. So it is repetition. Uh, it can be a little bit monotonous, but then you got to try to add in the fun also. Yeah. yeah. Anything notable working with some of the great players that you've worked with that uh, anything funny or notable, like, you know, Sidney Crosby or anybody uh, uh, that, that you work with and just, uh, they're like, wow, that, that stuff works or anything funny that, that you share with yeah, us? Yeah. You know, I, it, 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 it's funny you bring up Sidney because I, Sidney started with me when he was 14. Uh, his, his then advisor was now his longtime agent, Pat Passan brought him to me and I'll never forget the Pat. It, it, Sidney has such an unusual name. So most of the time, I don't even remember, like kids, guys will come up to me I'm, and say, oh my gosh, I worked with you when uh, I was at your camp when I was 10. It was like, like Frankie Vetrano, I was, he was on the ice in uh, Boston and I was doing a camp in Boston and he said, he came skating over and said, Robbie, I, I have your jersey in my closet. Now, I didn't remember, obviously, he was 10, you know, so. <laughs> and uh, I hadn't seen him, so I get that a lot, but Sydney's name was so unusual that I remember, plus, Pat came up to me, now this is a, you know, you, you everybody knows who Pat is, he's. He represents half the best players in the NHL. And this was a guy at the time that had Brett Hall and um, uh, Luke Robitaille. And he says to me, hey, this is the best 14-year-old I've ever seen. Now, that also, you know, sticks with you when you hear yeah. that. <laughs> and, uh, but he had skating issues. It, not that he wasn't strong on his skates. He was. There were posture-related issues that were going to cost him later on. And that's what we worked on over and over and over. And that kid at 14 was the last kid off the ice. The most questions. Uh, and that carried right over to when he came to me as a June, his uh, draft year. Right. Right. He did every year until 17, I believe. Uh, uh, when he was 17 years old. So that would have been 2000, whatever, four, three. But um, last guy off the ice, most video questions. And I will relate to you a great story about Sydney. Uh, was my older boy who ended up playing at Connecticut College. 
uh, was maybe eight, nine, ten at the time. And he's on the ice with me after I had a little extra time and he jumped on and he, you know, Sidney Crosby, you know, any of them. Sidney was 17. And uh, we'd been hearing the stories, you know, we knew he was going to be the first pick. And Sidney, instead of leaving and going back to his hotel or going to have lunch, hung out on the bench for 30 minutes, throwing Ryan pucks, um, uh, giving him some tips, you know, things like that. It was just, it was awesome. I don't know why he's so polarizing. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> well, I like well, him. Yeah, I think I think some of the people don't like when they they still equate the first five years of the NHL when as soon as he got touched, he would make those expressions, go right to the refs to now, and he's not the same kid that he oh, was back then. Close. And everybody so, yeah, very close, but yeah. I mean, it's yeah. But I, I I don't know that stuck with him, you know. Yeah. It's like, but you take guys like you imagine. Like these guys nowadays that they're talking about some of these guys that are coming up, but you take these guys that are the, I would love to see Crosby get drafted now and not be allowed to get touched like the McKinnons and the uh, McDavid's and dry sidles and Marners and Matthews. You imagine what he could do now in this. I mean, they grew up in a clutch and grab style hockey where you, you had to be strong on your skate. Yeah right in the beginning. And it started to open up a little bit just as he was into his about fourth or fifth year. Right. Yeah. 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 But, but I mean, like you said, you have to be strong on your pace. Sometimes, though. He's a, he's, he's a tough player. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, so Robbie, what advice can you give to young players out there about their skating? Anything in particular that one piece of advice that you could give? Yes. Get, get your posture, right. Always get your posture, right. That's where it starts. And that's any sport. You know, I'm uh, I've got, it just I'm, just because I'm here in Phoenix, it's reminding me. I've got uh, Hank Haney's kid in my camp this weekend, and uh-huh. he was with me two weeks ago. And you know the famous golf instructor, Tiger's golf Tiger, coach. Tiger. Wonderful family, by the way. And the, and their boy is a very very good player, a young kid, uh, nine years old. He's gonna be very good. But you know, if Hank's teaching uh, Tiger or any great golfer how to, it starts with posture. It starts with how you line your body up and it could be a, I love playing tennis and it's the same thing there. It's how you set your body up, uh, starts everything. So get to someone, get to my camps, get to you guys and, and get in the right posture. Uh, that is, that is the penultimate, uh, answer for, for skating. Once you do that, everything uh, gets easier and works off of that. Great. I always, uh, my bit of advice that I tell that to pretty much everybody I work with is the day you pay attention to your skating is the day you become a better skater. So oh, 100%. that, uh, uh, I, I can't yeah, say it's a unique like, sport. You, you, you know, every other sport you, you, if you can walk or run, you can play it. You might not be the best, but you can play it. Our sport, you have to learn a whole different skill just to play the sport. And, uh, and it's not natural. And because uh, skating is not a natural thing and skating the proper way, certainly, right. you know, you're talking about your hips. Um, you cannot uh, you cannot push out properly if your hips are super, uh, super tight. And right. you and in everything we do we, when you run or walk, you, you go straight line skating. You push. I'm going to try to show you here. You push yeah. out. As you guys know, but I'm showing your audience. You push out to the side. There's nothing else we really do that's that. Uh, uh, that includes that. So your hips have to develop differently and you've got to train your muscles to push, to do something that's counterintuitive. You got to push away from your body and it's not a natural movement. So uh, right away we're behind the eight ball. If that's that would explain my skating right there. To the <laughs> well, so I grew up like five minutes from the hockey rink, but one County over where hockey wasn't a thing. So until I met Dave and I was at the rink a year before I even put skates on. So, oh, no but, kidding. Okay. So, so I you was, shake it up as an adult? I was 23, yeah. 22, 23 when I started really skating, like in leagues and stuff. Um, we have a good friend of ours who um, Dave actually uh, gives me compliments about helping him teach kids. Uh, right. uh, this guy, Bill Lucasonis. Yeah. Um, and I joined his, what I he calls the bony classes. Good. <laughs> yeah, you were you know Luke from when the last time you were at the ring, and um, but he has these adult Zamboni classes where if you're a mom or dad and you want to learn how to start skating, so I did those for two whole years, and then whenever I could, I got on the ice with Dave and his uh, A League All Stars, and like I'd get skated around, but it made me better because I knew where to be on the ice. So even if I couldn't skate, I could be on the ice in the right spot. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. Eventually, my you know your stride becomes your stride, 
Mine's yeah. horrible. Yeah, I, he's still hopeless, by the way. Oh, after all these years, I have so. no hands. <laughs> like I played baseball, and we were talking about this. I could, I could bat a, I could hit a curveball, but I cannot bat a puck out of the air to save my life, and that's coming <laughs> straight at me, and I don't get it. But we were talking about this right. That's before. muscle memory. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly where I was going. We were talking about this right before you got on. So I've read multiple spots where. Obviously, power skating is something to do when the kids, you know, probably between like that 10 and 14, it's a great time to do it because that's when you're developing your muscle memory. That's right. And then I oh, read that it takes closer, younger, younger, yeah. younger too. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I heard that it takes about like to adjust somebody's strides. So let's say uh, when you were working with Crosby, it takes close to a thousand strides to just get your muscle memory to stop what you were doing instinctively to change completely. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's. I mean, I don't know how to quantify. Right, it. right. I'm just saying, throwing a number. Like that, but the, but the, I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of hours and a lot of breaking of old habits, even for someone as great as him. Yeah. And uh, uh, and when I would get when I was first hired by the Kings, now there weren't many of me in the league at that point. You know, I was one of the first. Uh, Barry Melrose hired me in the early '90s, and my first class. He goes, hey, you're out here with us today. I'm, I'm, I'm going fishing or golf, whatever he was doing. <laughs> and he goes, and I got there. I assumed it was just going to be a couple tough guys or a couple guys from the AHL. And sure, I'm out there. It's like everybody but Gretzky and Curry. You know, I was like, <laughs> Blake and Mike Robitaille and, or, or Tony Granado and Rick Talk. You know, that whole class, right? And or that whole group that we had there, which was a great team, um, and a great group of guys. You know, and. Uh, uh, and they were out there going for it, but it's a lot of, it's tough to break some of those habits. It takes years. Now, some guys get certain things quicker and some, and some regress and then come forward. You step back before you step forward. Um, but if you keep working on it the right way, uh, eventually, especially as great an athlete as they, as they are, they get it. Right. So I agree. Well, listen, Robbie, we could talk hockey forever. I hopefully get you back on the show again soon. But I appreciate you coming on. And this is going to be our first show, by the way. So you are our oh, inaugural I, guest for the on podcast, the, on the Rock and Hockey Podcast show. So I'm kicking I, it off. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Anytime, guys. Anytime. And then if the and if some of this stuff, if they want to make more sense, they can literally just go on. Uh, kids, parents can go on um, on YouTube or NHL.com and just put my name in, and they can watch all these NHL networks that you guys were referring to yep. and learn the proper posture and learn because all those were. I mean, speaking of Hank Haney, I tried to set this up like the Golf Channel in a way where we were teaching how to do things and and uh, as opposed to just say, here's the breakout, here's the great goal. It was like, how did they get there? How right. did they get there? So they can yeah. go on uh, online and watch all these videos. They're all up there and they can learn a lot from that as well as, of course, skating with guys like you and skating with me and um, and so forth. So I hope to see everybody soon. I'm going to be your way in the summer. Yes. Yeah. Let us know when you're coming out, Robbie. Thank you so yeah. much. Beautiful. Anytime, guys. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care, Rob. Take Thanks. care. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. so, all right. All right. Robbie uh, Glance. That was good. This is Rocket Hockey. This is Rocket Hockey. <laughs> Today's skill development session is brought to you by our friends at Piranis, Piranis Hockey World. Today we're starting a new shoot to score series called Rock and Roll Goals. All right? and we're going to learn not only how to shoot the puck, because we've learned about that in a lot of other rock and hockey uh, shows, but we're going to learn how to increase your chances of scoring goals by increasing the quality of your shots. So we're not only going to work on shooting technique, we're going to work on situational shooting and again how to improve the quality of your shot so that your goals go up. All right? I've always said, look, I don't work for NASA, but I do know enough about math to know that scoring goals is all about percentages. So we're going to work on how to increase your percentages of shooting a quality shot every time in a game situation. Get your calculators out, get a piece of paper to take some notes, get your protractor out because we're going to work on we're going to work on shooting to score rock and roll goals here in a rock and hockey show. 
Put your thinking caps on, get your number two pencil out. Let's do this. For today's Rock and Roll Gold, we're rocking Iron Maiden. Okay, so before we get started shooting, I want to talk a little bit about the thought process of what goes through the mind of a shooter, all right? Yeah, I know, it's pretty deep, okay? But mainly, what are we looking at, okay? What are we looking at when we shoot the puck? <clears throat> well, Coach Dave, we look at the net. Yeah, it sounds simple, but when you're under pressure in a game and you got five players from the other team that are trying to kill you, and the clock's ticking, and there's a goalie, and the coach, and the fans, all right? It's not as easy as you think it is. So make sure you know where the net is, and any time you can look at it, make sure you get a, a good look at it, okay? Not just out of the corner of your eye. If you can look at it, look at it clearly, okay? Now, when I say clearly, sometimes you're looking in a direction, and you can see something, but you're not focused in or dialed in on it, okay? Just like looking at a book, you can see it, but unless you're focusing in on a word, you can't read it, okay? So it's important to really get your focus in on seeing the net clearly, okay? Now, I know there's going to be times when you're under pressure, all right, and you don't even have a chance to look at the net, so that's when you're going to use your hockey instincts or your spidey senses or the force, whatever works for you, or a combination of all of them, to just shoot the puck in a general direction in the net. And that happens a lot. Even NHL players will do that, okay? But if you have a chance to look at the net, it's important that you focus. Focus clearly on seeing the net, okay? Now, as you can see, I have a, a old-fashioned shooter tutor in here right now, all right? And it's uh, fun to shoot up because you got these corners and a five hole, all right? But you know what? <clears throat> I don't really like using these, and I don't, uh, I don't think they're a good... Uh, they're good for uh, creating good shooting habits, all right? And why I say that is, is most players are going to be trying to shoot, obviously, at the corners, okay? So listen, <clears throat> see this right here? All right? That's the red post, and that draws your attention, okay? It draws your attention big time, and that's what most players are shooting at, okay? Because when you're looking... Everybody wants to go bar down or shoot high because it looks pretty, but your this red is attracting your attention. Okay, so what happens is you're shooting at the red. All right. Well, you know what? If it hits the post and doesn't go in, it doesn't even count as a shot on goal. Okay. Also, here comes the math. Get ready for this. All right. If you <clears throat> you have to hit probably on the bottom 15% of this bar. Okay. So probably 70, maybe 85% of this bar, if the puck hits it, it's not going in the net. It needs to hit way down here for it to even go in the net. Otherwise, it's not even a shot on goal, okay? So if you miss, all right, you miss by a quarter of an inch, it's not going in the net, okay? It's gonna bounce out, bounce up, bounce away, all right, but it's not even gonna be a shot on goal, and you're gonna go back to bench, oh man. Oh, everybody's gonna, wow, that was a great shot. Well, it's not a great shot, you missed, okay? So what we need to do is you need to train yourself, okay, and this takes a lot of practice and a lot of discipline to train yourself to shoot inside the net, okay? So instead of looking at the red, look inside. Now, technically this netting is supposed to be white, but it's not really white, but <clears throat> learn to look at the white, okay? Learn to look at the white when you're shooting. Try not to focus on the red, because that's gonna draw your attention and that's exactly where you're gonna shoot the puck, okay? I don't know how many players, uh, well, forever uh, you know you watch them in warm-ups you watch them uh, at practice uh, when they're out just shooting around bam 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 pucks off the glass pucks off the bar off the glass pucks off the bar off the netty okay probably their shooting percentage if you if you really did the math on it it's probably at about 10 percent maybe 20 tops that's not very good okay if you're getting two to three shots a game which is probably average unless you're Ovechkin but uh, two to three shots is, is quite a bit actually and you're shooting at 20% in practice with no distractions, all right, the chances of you scoring a goal in a game when you have all those other factors now is down to probably about 1%, okay? Again, don't, uh, um, again, that's my math, okay? So don't quote me on that one, but it's a very small percentage, okay, uh, of, of being able to score a goal when you have all those other factors. So we learn to look inside the net here Okay, just get rid of this for a second. Okay, we're looking in here, not here, all right? I have a margin of error of several inches in every direction, all right, that I could still miss by and it's still gonna go inside the net, okay? So learning to look inside is gonna draw that attention more in our uh, sh missed shots is gonna go down significantly, okay? Which means our shots on net is gonna go up significantly, which now automatically increases your chances of scoring. Okay? 
I know it's a lot of math, I told you, to get your thinking caps on today. But uh, I want you to think about that and, um, and we're going to work on that today, okay? So, we are going to use a shooter tutor today, all right? but we're not going to be shooting for the corners. What we're going to be doing is, see this bullseye right here, with that big E? That's where we're shooting, okay? We're going to learn to direct our attention right there. And what I want to do is channel my energy of my shot and my focus, all right, right at that spot right there, okay? When I get good at hitting that, it's going to be easy now to channel my focus over here and shoot it there, and then over here and shoot it there or down here, all right? So all we're learning to do is focus our energy in one spot. And then if I move that spot, it should be just as easy to hit that spot, okay? Does that make sense? Good. Remember, there's gonna be a test on this later, so make sure you review your notes, all right? So we're gonna get at it and we're gonna work on shooting right here, okay? So that means our focus is gonna go there, our energy is gonna be directed there, and our follow through is gonna go there. So uh, like I've always said, it's great to score by accident. It's even better to score on purpose. Okay? All right. Let's get at it. Okay. Again, what we're trying to do here is focus our energy at one exact location. And right here, it happens to be the E. Using his Messier shot, Wes does a great job with his shot preparation, and all his energy goes down through the puck right to the E. Now using his slap shot, Wes has a great shot preparation, great energy coming down through the puck, and you can look right off the end of his stick right to the E. Here, using his wrist shot, Wes again does great shot preparation and all his energy goes right off the end of his stick at a focus point right at the E. With all three types of shots, Wes is accomplishing all three major objectives. Get the shot off as quickly as you can, shoot it as hard as you can, and shoot it as accurate as you can. Here, using his Messier shot, Mason has great shot preparation, great energy down through the puck, and great focused energy right at the E. Once again with the slap shot, Mason has great shot preparation, great energy down through the puck off the end of his stick at a focus point right at the E. Lastly with his wrist shot, Mason again, great shot preparation, great focus energy right at the E. Every shot taken here was a high quality shot, thus improving our chances of getting high quality shots in a game and therefore improving our chances of scoring goals. Hey, you should check out Trotta. I did. Do it.
And this is a rock and hockey show.